Miniature number one. They drove right past me at the intersection. It was definitely Lee, her blonde hair fluttering behind her. What was my wife doing on the back of a motorcycle at three in the afternoon? I turned and followed them. They disappeared into the woods. I parked and walked. It was a warm spring day. Golden sunlight, buzzing insects, a silky breeze, the wet spanking sound of overexcited pussy. They did it on a blanket. Lee's breasts were exceptional. They bounced up and down as she pounded her victim enthusiastically. Both of them had their eyes closed. It was a touching scene. So I stopped to take some artistic shots. I thought the setting framed the two adulterers beautifully. He was grunting like a hippo during the rut. I said casually, Hi, Lee, who's your new friend? They didn't hear me. I repeated after the ominous sounds of camming subsided. A light storm followed. He jumped up to confront me. I recognized him. It was Bill Avery, another teacher. He was a few years younger than my wife. They must have gone out, so to speak, to blow off steam after a hard day in the classroom. I know all of Lee's co-workers. You can't be married to someone for almost a year and a half and not hear stories about co-workers. This guy had a couple kids. Stupid! I showed my phone. FYI, your wife gets this as soon as I get back to the car. He started protesting. You committed a felony, asshole. Then I turned to Lee. She was staring at me, stunned. I growled. You're smart. You know what this means. I turned around and walked away. Shortly afterward, Lee came home. She looked disheveled. She went upstairs, showered, and came downstairs in yoga pants and a tight t-shirt. Bitch, she thinks she can fuck me and pull me back into her bosom. And out loud I said, You're wasting your time. This marriage is over. She whimpered. But it was just a little fling. It meant nothing. It meant the end of our marriage. Have you thought about it? She wailed. No, you cannot divorce me because of one little indiscretion. I snorted. You call this carelessness? Lee looked surprised. Obviously, I wasn't buying it. She said carelessly, There was nothing special about him. I put him out of my mind. I'm all yours now. I laughed. I've seen and heard, Lee. You loved every second of it, and you'll be back as soon as the fever breaks. She looked scared. Maybe I wasn't as much of a loser as she thought. She put on her most seductive look and said, Come upstairs, baby, and I'll show you how much you mean to me. Really? She thought I was that stupid? I tried to keep the anger out of my voice. I'm leaving. I'm not coming back. She went the other way. Her face turned red. You're making a big deal out of this, Todd. I never cheated on you. You've been out of town for two weeks every month since we've been married. I've had a lot of offers. This is the first time I've ever said yes. We can get through this if you really love me. Amazing. I looked at her with regret. Goodbye, Lee. Wait to hear from my lawyer. We had only been together for a short time, and I was getting tired of the constant deceptions. I was tired of watching every move just to keep my marriage alive. It's time to end it. I drove two towns over and parked in front of a neat little bungalow. Standing in the front yard was a gorgeous woman with brown hair holding the hand of a cute little eight-year-old girl. The woman looked puzzled. She let go of the girl, walked over to me, and gave me a deep, heartfelt kiss. She seemed a little concerned. I thought you were on your monthly trip. Did something happen? I looked into her beautiful eyes. Only good things. I decided that life was too short. It was time for me to stop traveling. My wife wrapped her arms around my neck, pressed her whole body against me, and said sincerely, Welcome back, Stephen. Your family missed you. Miniature number two. Mike couldn't imagine that this day could be any worse. It was bad enough that he'd been handed an envelope and given the bad news. But now he would have to go home and break the news to his wife, Michelle. They had gotten married three years ago, right out of college, and had started their careers. They were both making decent money, but Mike had no idea how they were going to manage financially. Mike was immersed in his thoughts, barely aware of his surroundings as he drove home when his cell phone rang. Hello? Hey, baby. Is everything okay? You don't sound so good. Sorry, it's been a rough day. I'll tell you about it when I get home. Okay. I have something to tell you when you get home, too. Oh, I forgot to tell you before my parents are having dinner with us tonight. I'll see you when you get home. Love you. I love you, too. When the call ended, Mike groaned. He loved Michelle's parents. 
but the last thing he wanted to do was give her bad news when her parents were there. On second thought, though, maybe having them there wasn't so bad. They had been through a lot. So maybe they could help Michelle see that this was just a setback and that together they would find a way to get through it. Mike didn't want to spoil everyone's dinner, but decided it would be best to break the bad news as soon as they got home. That way they would have plenty of time to talk about it and try to work out a plan on how to move forward. Mike, envelope in hand, walked through the door of their small apartment and found Michelle and her parents, Tom and Mary Beth, sitting on the couch waiting for him. Michelle had the biggest smile on her face as she sat holding her mother's hand, and it pained him to know that he would be the cause of her smile turning to tears. Before he could enter, Michelle said, Hi, baby. I know you've had a rough day, but I have something important to tell you. So, for the last ten months, we've been trying to have kids without success. So today my mom went with me to the fertility doctor. They took some blood to run some tests while we talked to the doctor. After a while, a nurse came in and handed the results of the blood test to the doctor. After looking at the results, he said there was nothing he could do to help because I'm already pregnant. Mike stared silently at Michelle for a minute, digesting what she had just told him. As he took in her words, tears streamed down his face. Michelle, thinking that Mike was stunned by this news, jumped up to hug Mike but recoiled in horror when he screamed, Don't touch me! Tom and Marybeth stared at Mike incredulously. They had never seen him like this before. Mike, what happened? I don't understand. We talked about this. This is what you wanted, isn't it? What did I want? This is definitely not what I wanted. What I wanted was to have children with the woman I loved most in the world, raise them, and then grow old together, surrounded by family and friends. This is what I wanted. Michelle was on the verge of tears. What are you talking about? We're going to have a baby. We're going to grow old together. No, you are having a baby, not us. Mike spit out the venom. Did you forget I had a doctor's appointment today? I went to a reproductive doctor, too, to see what advice he could give me to help you get pregnant. But instead, he gasped, lifting the envelope in his hand above his head before tossing it onto the coffee table. This is what I got. A stupid fucking piece of paper that robbed me of all my hopes and dreams. Since no one else spoke, Tom asked, What's in the envelope, Mike? Looking Tom in the eye, Mike replied, The results of today's tests... Turning his hate-filled eyes to Michelle, he said through clenched teeth, I'm infertile. 